Okay, so this is the lipid test, the control test, where we're going to put vegetable oil on one drop of vegetable oil on the brown piece of paper, and then we're going to put one drop of water on a brown piece of paper. Here's the water. And so this is the vegetable oil, and this is the water. This is the lipid test, and so this would be the positive, since vegetable oil is a lipid. This is the positive for lipids. Water has no lipids in it, so this is the negative for lipids. So let's just sit there and look at that for a second. Okay, so we'll come back to this as reference when we do our unknown food items. Okay, so now we're ready to do the protein test. So we will use these two test tubes right here for the protein test. And so what I'll do is in the first one, I'll put just water, All right? And I put in way too much. I'm gonna empty a little bit of that out. There we go. So that's water, and then in the second one, I'm going to put a protein in there called pepsin. Get that in your view right there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put that into this test tube. Just a little bit. Okay, and so now to test for the presence of protein, we're going to use an indicator called Biurette. <clears throat> so we're going to take some Biurette and add it to both the water and to the pepsin. So water has no protein in it, so that's our negative, and the pepsin has protein in it, which is our positive. And so we will see what Biurette looks like in a negative or a no protein solution, and then also what it looks like in a protein solution. Take those out so you can see them a little bit better. So we have our negative protein and our positive protein. And biuret is what we use to test for the presence of those proteins. All right, the next test we're going to do is for carbohydrates, specifically the carbohydrate starch. So we're going to use these two test tubes. So once again, we'll set up one with just water in it. So we'll take this test tube and put a little bit of water in there, like so. And for the other test tube, we'll actually put the starch in there that we'll be testing for. So we'll take some starch and put that in our test tube, like so. And to test for the presence of starch, we'll be using an indicator called Lugol's iodine solution. And so we will put that in the water. The water has no starch in it, so we'll be looking at what a negative test for starch looks like with Lugol's. So there is our negative, no starch present, looks like that. And then we'll take our starch solution, which obviously has starch in it, and test with it the Lugol's iodine. So we'll see what the Lugol's tells it, shows us what starch looks like, or how it tests for the presence of starch. So again, we have a positive and a negative, but in this case, a positive and a negative for starch. We have our negative for starch with Lugol's iodine, and a positive for starch with Lugol's iodine. Okay, so now we're gonna do the glucose test. So I'll take one test tube, and just like before, put nothing but water in it, so that'll be our negative. Water does not have glucose in it. And then we will take our second test tube and we'll put some glucose solution in that. Which glucose is essentially just sugar. Or a type of sugar. Okay, so there's our glucose solution. Not much difference so between what they look like. So we'll add the indicator and see what it shows us for a negative for glucose, which is what the water is, and a positive for glucose, which is what the glucose solution is. And to do that, we will use our Benedict's solution. So I'll add some Benedict's solution to both the water and to the glucose solution so it'll show us what a positive and what a negative looks like for glucose. So here is the negative, just the water with the Benedict's. And then we'll put some in the glucose solution as well. Put a little bit more in there. There we 
go. Now this reaction actually takes some time and I have to heat it up in a hot water bath. So I am actually going to do that and bring it back once that result is finished. Okay, so the reaction is finished with the Benedicts and you can see the results. So this is our water and Benedicts or our negative for glucose. And this is our Benedicts and glucose solution or our positive for glucose. So Benedicts turns this color in the presence of glucose. So we have all of our tests that have been done. So we have our negative and positive for protein. We have our negative and positive for starch, our negative and positive for glucose, and our negative and our positive for lipids on the brown piece of paper. So we'll be using these as reference for later on when you test the food items to see if the food items have proteins, starches, glucose, or lipids in them to see how they look in comparison to your positive and negatives from the control experiments. Feel free when you see these tests for the food items to go back to the previous parts of the video where they show the results of the control tests. The first food item is half and half and you can see the three different tubes will be testing the half and half in. Here are the test results for the half and half. The first one is with the Lugol's iodine, then we have the Benedict's, then the Bayeret, and then the lipid test. This is the protein shake test, so that you can make your initial observations of the protein shake. Here are the test results for the protein shake. First one is Lugol's iodine, Benedict's is second, then Bayeret is third, and then there is the lipid test. Here's the coconut water. You can make your initial observations. Here are the test results for the coconut water. We got our first one is Lugol's iodine, then we have our Benedict's, and then the Bayeret, and then the lipid.